Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to the Friday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them on this St. Patrick's Day. We're in Psalm 109. Happy St. Patrick's Day as well. Psalm 109, verses 1 to 5. I gotta lose the hat. I can't take myself seriously looking at myself like that. <laughs> okay, Psalm 109, verses 1 to 5, reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this glorious day. And Lord, we we pray, O oh God, that as we come into your holy presence, Lord, you will speak a word of encouragement to us, a word of hope. And Lord, that you will uh, guide us into a deeper relationship with you. And so, Lord, we pray that you will quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. So, Psalm 109, verses 1 to 5. O God, whom I praise, don't stand, st don't stand silent and aloof, while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me. They surround me with hateful words and fight against me, for no reason. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I am praying for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. This Psalm of David and David's, and I encourage you to read the whole Psalm, it is a Psalm of lament, uh, very much a Psalm of lament, and, and yet he finds it in his heart to praise God. And an interesting thing that, that David is doing in this psalm is praying for those who persecute him. Not uh, judging them, not condemning them, but praying for them. But he begins by saying, O God whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof. In other words, he is crying out to God that in, in this time of distress, in this time of persecution, in this time of evildoers surrounding him, he's crying out to God to make his presence known. He's crying out to God to, to not be aloof, not be silent, but be an ever-present help, to be present and to guide him, to give him wisdom and words to speak. He says, don't stand silent and aloof. And friends, we're so grateful that we serve a God who is not silent and not aloof. He's not far off, but he's a God who comes in close and ministers to us in the midst of life, who helps us and gives us wisdom and courage to face the challenges each day. David continues, says, Don't stand silent and aloof while the wicked stand, slander me and tell lies about me. Have you ever been in a situation where people are telling lies about you? Who people are speaking behind your back, mistruths and lies and sowing seeds of deceit? It's an exceedingly un uncomfortable place to be. But God is more powerful than anything that the world can throw at us. And so David is, acknowledges that. He's acknowledging that he's praying to the God whom he praises, the God whom we praise. And he's saying, help me. He's crying out for help from the Lord. And he's, he's laying out this case, really, for what is happening to him. He says, they surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. These evildoers that, that David is praying to the Lord for help against are trying to take him down. They're trying to destroy him. It is the work of Satan that tries to destroy those who seek to walk humbly with the Lord, those whose heart seeks after God's own heart. And as, as is often the case, as people succeed in their journey of faith, 
the work of Satan becomes more intense. And then David says this, and it's this interesting verse in this psalm. And it's one that we need to remember as Christians. He says, I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I am praying for them. Friends, it's easy for us to pray for those we love. It's easy for us to, to lift up to God our intercessory prayers for those who are, who are suffering from illness, from brokenness. It's easy for us to, to pray for our family members that they will become born-again believers in Jesus Christ. But it's a wholly different thing to pray for those who persecute us, to pray for those who hate us, to pray for those who sow seeds of deceit and tell lies about us. But that's what, what, what we are to do. David says, I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I am praying for them. So David is acknowledging that even in the midst of these trials and tribulations, these challenges, these persecutions, David is praying for them. He's modeling the example that Jesus set for us, that Jesus would ultimately set for us on the cross. When he looked down from the cross at all of the, the, the all of his brothers, his Jewish brothers, who persecuted him, who told lies about him, who tortured him. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Jesus could very easily and, and rightfully so prayed, Father, strike them down, destroy them, punish them for the wickedness that they have unleashed on me and unleashed hatred upon those who persecuted him, but he does not. Through the entire process, he surrenders to God. Through the entire process, he says, Father, forgive them. Just as David is saying here, I love them, Jesus loved us, and he loves us still. He loved his Jewish brothers and sisters. John, the opening verses of, of the Gospel of John says, he came to his very own and loved them. But they denied him. They did not love him back. David is, is experiencing this, this same kind of a feeling in his heart. He says, I love them. But they try to destroy me and with accusations, even as I'm praying for them. Can you imagine Jesus? These people, his own people, are trying to destroy him. And yet he loves them. And he prays for them. Even as they are trying to destroy him, he prays for them and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And then verse 5 says, They repay, repay evil for good and hatred for my love. Jesus could utter those words. Jesus came with the desire to draw those who are lost to himself, to save them from their life of sin. And he was repaid evil for the good that he did. All the good that he did, the healing, the, the um, casting out of demons, everything that he did, the saving of those who were lost, was repaid with evil. Utter evil. 
and as he was loving his people, he was repaid with hatred. Jesus bore that upon himself for you and for me. He bore the evil and the hatred of this world upon himself so that we could demonstrate his love and his goodness through bearing witness to his saving grace. Now, I know that David wrote this psalm centuries before Jesus came along. But David was experiencing, he had a foretaste, not the fullness that Jesus experienced, but a foretaste of the evil in men's hearts, the hatred in men's hearts. And he experienced how Satan uses people to sow seeds of deceit and hatred. But God is more powerful, and David recognized that. And he knew that God was able to make all things right. And so David did not waver in his commitment to seeking the Lord, not to retaliate, but to pray for those who persecute him. Not to fight back, not to return evil for evil, but to pray for them. And this psalm is a prayer for those who persecute him. And I encourage you to read the whole psalm today and pray that the Lord will bless you and speak a word of encouragement and hope for you this day. If you are facing persecution, if you are facing challenges, people are speaking lies and accusations against you that aren't true, don't retaliate. Don't return evil for evil, but offer them to God in prayer and allow God to work, to bring about his justice and righteousness for his name's sake. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day, Lord, and we just pray, O oh God, that that as we uh, seek to walk humbly with you, Lord, your hand of favor will be upon us, that you will give us the words to speak, words of life, words of grace, compassion, and truth, that you will, you will help us to be forgiving people, that as we seek to model Christ, Lord, we will forgive others, of their trespasses, even as you have forgiven us. So God, we pray that you will guide us and uphold us with your love and your grace this day and every day. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And as, as we are at the end of another week, I just uh, I want to encourage you to not forsake the gathering of God's people on the Sabbath day. And if you are able to, to, uh, to gather for worship in your local church. If you are not able to uh, where you uh, normally worship, I want to invite you to join us here at Queensway. We are open for in-person worship. We gather for worship at 10 a.m. And uh, we would be delighted to have you join us. If you are uncomfortable still uh, gathering in person. Uh, our, our worship service is live streamed at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning on this YouTube channel, and we invite you to join us there. And as we are in at the end of another week, I just want to um, encourage you to have a, a blessed weekend, to enjoy time with family and friends, and to enjoy time with God to give him praise and glory for his hand of favor in your life. And so, friends, be kind, stay safe, love generously as the Lord has loved you generously. And we look forward to seeing you next week as we continue on our journey through the Psalms and uh, with these Bible breaks. And so, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen. See you next week, friends.